your most recent Cage Fury Hall of Fame inductee, the matchmaker himself, Arius Garcia Jr. Arius, how we doing, man? Really good, Jake. I've been posting a lot. I'm, just, I'm still on cloud nine. Still on cloud nine. I'd be on cloud nine too, man. I mean, that's an honor. You got a sick piece of jewelry out of it. You had a whole dinner in your honor mentioned on the broadcast. I mean, it was a great weekend to say the least. And it's been a great tenure with Cage Fury. So like, I don't know, like you said, cloud nine, but all in all, like how good does it feel to really get that recognition? It's really awesome. You know, very humbling and, and, and truly unexpected. Um, I think Rob had been talking to my wife to like surprise me and, and Rob, like, <laughs> A little while ago, sent me a really nice letter just basically telling me I was being inducted into the CFFC Hall of Fame. And it was like literally one of the nicest things anyone has ever said about me. And it's just it's something that I really like never thought would happen. I just it just wasn't thinking about it, you know, because you know, like you're, you're, I'm an employee, you know, of the, of the company. And you just don't think about that, you know, but it was man, I, I, I wanted that chain. I wanted that, that emblem ever since, you know, Rob and Rob showed me like the early stages of the design with, you know, Gary and Josh uh, Spivak, what they were doing. I said, bro, I need one of those. And he, told, he told me there was only one way <laughs> to get that. And I was like, all right, well, well I'm never going to get it. I'll keep working. Now. Yeah. But it, it's, it's truly an honor, you know, knowing Rob for as long as I, I have, he's truly one of the greatest minds in MMA right now. Just, what he does, even even a lot of stuff that that doesn't go public of what he does for not only, you know, the employees that work for him, the fighters, everyone on down. It's just tr it's truly an honor. And then just tell us about the experience a little bit. I mean, obviously, I was there, but a lot of people watching weren't. So like a dinner piece of jewelry, like just just kind of walk us through the weekend and how how awesome it was. Yeah, man. So like, you know, I, I debated a little bit on on having it during a Cage Fury uh, fight week just because, like, you know, I'm so stressed out during fight week and everything. But but starting on, you know, Thursday, everyone made weight. And I was like, this is too good to be true. Uh, so everyone made weight, which just really made the night special. And then, you know, I, I was surrounded by my um, by the people you know closest to me. My, my parents were there, my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephew, my wife, my 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 three children, um, you know, Jake Noker made an appearance. So it was like, I, 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 it was to number one to get the award, but to really be surrounded by the people that you love and, you know, trust. And I wish I could have said more, but I, I really don't like the spotlight on me. I wish I could have thanked my dad um, just for introducing me to sport. I remember he rented UFC one in 1993 when I was like 16 or, or 17. And I wish I could have, you know, thanked my wife more just because it's sometimes it's, it's, it's hell uh, living with a matchmaker for, for fight week, but a uh, great experience. Um, you know, having, having, you know, my, my cage fury family with me there too. Um, it was just, it was, the food was great, you know, and it's just, it's awesome. Just, you know, hearing some of the nice words people said about you and you kind of like take a look back and just say, Hey, maybe you did make a difference a little bit in, you know, someone's, you know, career or, you know, something like that. So it was truly awesome. And then the fights were spectacular. The next night we really, we really, I think we only had like two decisions and it was great. And I, I remember, <laughs> I remember walking into the 2300 arena and I don't know if they saw the video or, or whatever on, on, I don't know, but someone stopped me on my way in and like, that's the guy. And they were like, congratulations. And my <laughs> daughter, my daughter, Serena was like, your head is probably so big right now. I was like, you yeah, know, stop, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's awesome. Yeah. That's great, man. And it well-deserved, like you said, like you don't think about it like this, but yeah, man, you make moments for people's lives. Like, you know, a uh, Luke Fernandez, look at him now where he started. That's yeah. because of you giving him an opportunity. So it definitely means a lot to people and and their careers. And like, this might be a silly question, but I get, I'll make it a two-parter. Like one with this award, like, do you view this as like, all right, I did it. I'm just keep doing my job. Or are you like, all right, like I did it. Like I'm the hall of famer. I got to keep making these crazy matches. But like, and then my second part of the question is like, how long do you see yourself continuing to do this? So the, the first part, man, I, I, it just motivates you more. Like it's, it's not like, okay, I'm done. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I reached the pinnacle. It's like, man, like it's like, now I really got to step up my game. Cause now I got, got to live up to like the, the, the hall of fame, you know, title, or whatever, but I I, I kind of had my own thing with like kind of similar to what Joe Rogan has with Dana White. Like if Dana goes, Joe goes. If Rob ever goes or sells or, or you know, 
goes off into the sunset, I'm probably going to follow him. So as, as long as Rob will have me and, you know, I'm going to keep doing this, man. I, I truly love it. You know, you know this, Jake. I, I don't do this, you know, full time. I, I do have a part time job. Um, I mean, I do have another full time job, but, you know, I, I love this game. I, it's really all I think about, you know, most of the time is, is what, what fights we can put on and, you know, how we can get these guys just, you know, a platform to the next level of their career. And hopefully it's, it's the UFC. And this is uh this is I literally just thought of this question because I'm curious. Um, for those who don't know, Arius is a social worker for his other job and works in some very stressful and hard to deal with situations. Um, I don't know the the closeness you actually work with, uh, you know, people in that industry, but is that something you could ever like gear, you know, a, a kid in trouble towards an MMA gym like Webs or Dante's or something as like an outlet or a safe haven? Yeah, absolutely. And in some counties, we have contracts with uh, jujitsu schools and MMA schools. So we'll, we'll point them in the, in the right direction. You know, we I deal with a lot of troubled youth who are, you know, who are less fortunate, you know, some are, you know, are in foster care, some don't have parents and, and they're, you know, the state is their parents. So anytime we can point them into a discipline, you know, like the martial arts or like, like jujitsu wrestling or whatever, we, we always take that opportunity because these kids unfortunately don't have a fair share. Um, but, but yeah, that this is a great sport to get into if you're young, especially if like you need direction and discipline in your life. Hey man, imagine, you know, Eddie Torres, Dante, Jonathan Webb being your mentor. Like they're all characters, but that's a very yeah. good role model. And it's going to shape you and to be a good person. Yeah. Dante and Rob call me at least once a week. If I have a Russian orphan with a uh, cauliflower <laughs> ear to, to like, give them. So we, we, we'll fix him up. <laughs> yeah. I always keep that open. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. And, uh, you know, it's the Spivak made the great jewelry I mentioned. And then now you're in like an exclusive class with Aljamain Sterling and Paul Felder. So, I mean, the big three yeah. Hall of Fame. And yeah, it's like, it's like it's like Aljamain Arias and Paul Felder, which name doesn't belong. <laughs> but, <laughs> the, but no, the it's the redhead. Yeah. But no, it's <laughs> just an honor to be mentioned um, with those two other guys. One, obviously. You know, Cage Fury champion, UFC champion that's still, you know, kicking ass at, at 145. And Paul, who's a legend in his own right, who, you know, I, I had the opportunity to sign to his first, you know, pro contract. And what he does, he did commentary for us. Um, and now he's doing commentary for the UFC. So to be in those two, to be in the breath of, of those two guys, is just, again, it's just a unique and humbling experience. And then, I, I you know, I don't necessarily need to get into all like the, best part of your career highlights, blah, blah, blah. We've already talked about that in an interview on my YouTube channel. And then I also yeah. posted the entire uh, Hall of Fame dinner speech to Cage Side's YouTube channel. So if you guys want to check that out and know more about Aries's career in depth, please go check those out. Uh, plenty of great stories. But I don't need to know who's next, obviously. You know, we'll keep that secret. But do we know when another Hall of Fame inductee is going to happen? I don't know. I, I haven't talked to Rob about that. Rob hasn't mentioned it, um, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to, to adding an, another member to the club, man. It's, I don't, I, I can't really express Jake, how much of an honor it is to be even thought of this and just to be surprised um, by something like this. It, it's what, what Rob does for me and my family, you know, is awesome. And Spivak, if, if, if you're, if you're in the area, Cherry Hill, they're one of the best rollers I've ever dealt with. They, I, I bought a, a ring for my wife, uh, Gary, uh, Josh and Chelsea, they're, they're, they're really awesome people. So, you know, just they support us. And if you want to support the people that support, you know, regional MMA, please uh, check them out over in uh, Cherry Hill. Yo, Josh Spivak is jacked too. That was he is, a he sleeper is. I might, build, man. I might have to sign him to uh, uh, an amateur just to see what he's about. Yeah, let's, let's get him in, man. Let's get him in. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, man, Cage Fury is uh, obviously my favorite organization, yours too. And for good reason. I mean, nothing but... Sure about that? What, 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 what are you going to say right now? Nah, we'll keep them other organizations out of my mouth. Yeah, we could get out of here. Cage Fury is my favorite. Do I cover some other ones? Sure. Yeah. Do I watch UFC? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I don't know what else you're you talking about. Yeah, you got a job to do. You got a job yeah. to do. Yeah, I do. But Cage Fury, you know, hearts with Cage Fury. And it should be. That's where I was going. It's a great organization. Top to bottom. Fighters, promoters, organizers. It's, it's amazing all around. And uh, if you still got like five minutes or so, I'd love to talk a little 132, 133, 134. Absolutely. Well, let's talk 132 because that, like you, we, we already touched on it a little bit. Crazy card, especially the last three fights. It was just Bilal knockout, Autumn Norton knockout, Kyle Dawkins knockout, all first round. Like, what the hell did you see that coming? 
No, I, I really did not. I really, I mean, the Bilal, you know, fight was really, really a, a toss up, you know. I thought it was going to be super close. I, I I did as well, you know. Um, but Bilal, man, if you if if you let him have space, and and you give him a chance to to create, you know, and I, I think the world of Shamel, you know, Shamel went five, yeah. you know, I think four, four rounds with with our former champion, and for him for him to take that fight just speaks volumes of what kind of fighter he is, because obviously he was higher than Bilal in 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 our ranking system and for him to take that fight uh, you know coming off a loss too um you know Shamel I I love that guy and and Bilal like geez like he he's going to be one of those guys that's super hard to find fights for just because he's so good he's so flashy he's so accurate and he's got it all he's got the charisma I was laughing when I watched the replay at home with him and um Money Moicano going at it, you know, at the at the post fight, but that was really great. Uh, Autumn Norton, like, you know, she she was four and two, and and those two fights were were those two losses were split decisions, and I I, I really like her camp. Jim West is a great coach and a great guy, and I remember talking to him at the weigh-ins, and I said, man, like, you know, we had to give Emily. Emily's kind of like the the female version of Luke, right? Like, no one will fight her. So I was like, I told Jim, I was like, I have to give you know, Emily, this title fight, because, you know, she's so hard to find fights for. And he looked at me and says, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. And after Autumn's performance is like, wow, like she, she's a killer, man. She, she's a killer. So I, I think, but Emily's 20 years old. She'll be back. You know, she has a great team with her sister. Um, you know, I checked up on her and she's, she's, she's really, you know, doing well in her spirits and, you know, she's going to chalk this up as a learning experience and where to move on from here. And, and the main event really just, I, I, I thought that was, you know, I thought that was awesome, you know, to, to see Kyle who, you know, I think he's undefeated in cage fury now. And to see him run through a prospect like that, like people weren't raising their hands to fight Keenan Patterson. You know, he's a really tough and that guy's solid. I don't know how the hell he makes 185. Um, but, but man, like uh, Kyle looked really impressive and he, I think um, I think it was your interview or, or another interview. He said like after the fight he blacked out. Like after the elbow he blacked out and he remembered himself on top of the cage. And I don't know if he remembers, but after the fight he was screaming like, "This is my belt! This is my belt!" And I had the belt in my hands and I was like, "Kyle, is this your belt?" He goes, "Yeah, it's my belt." I, was, <laughs> I, I love that guy. Um, Philly, you know, close close to home kid, and I I really hope you know uh, he gets the call because it'd be a disservice to to keep him on the regional scene. Dude, three finishes and four and zero since his second time back with Cage Fury. Yeah, come on, get this man back in the octagon. But uh, a follow up question to one thirty two because I interviewed yeah. Bilal the other day afterwards and I asked him, "Hey, you got your eyes on Villamil and Quinones? You want the winner for the title?" He said, "Yeah, obviously." But he said he said he prefers Quinones. Not that it necessarily matters, but from the matchmaker, do we get Bilal and Quinones or Villamil for the flyweight title? Could you imagine that fight? Oh, it'd be crazy. Wow. Yeah, I'm like salivating on that fight. Yeah, it sucks what happened with, with our 125, you know, title. It always stinks when someone, you know, uh, misses weight and then it becomes vacant because he won. So, yeah, man, how can how can I deny, you know, after that performance, how can I deny B Bilal? So we'll see what happens on July 26 at 133 with Gustavo and Max. But, man, that's uh, – it's crazy. Bilal's in a great place. And if, if, if Max, you know, he, he's got a really tough fight ahead of him. Um, and if he gets through that, then man, we're, we might have one of the best flyway fights outside the UFC. Yeah. All eyes on 133 coming up and, and just give me that, you know, Dana White. So to say why you got to watch 133. Well, I think you, you know, you already said it that the Max Quinones fight versus Gustavo Villamil, that that's a really good fight. That's going to be a title contender. And I, and I love the main event. Um, you know, Morquez, I, I love Morquez Forrest, man. Like, that guy has no quit in him. And whenever you think he's down, he comes out and he overcomes. And and Jake, you know, like, Rob Watley is an animal. Oh, he's a dog. Should be. Should be 100% in the UFC. 100%. Yep. Um, I think he's, like, 34, so that might, you know, hinder him a little bit. But after Morquez won, he asked for that fight. He said, okay, let's unify the titles. I want Watley. So I was like, Easy. okay. And 
yeah, called Wally. And obviously, you know, they were ecstatic to, to, to you know, get because we were trying to see if Rob was going to get like a short notice call to UFC. So we gave Rob time. And, you know, the I think one of the worst things a fighter can do is just remain, you know, inactive. So he was like, hey, listen, let, let's go. Let's do it. So um, that's going to be a really another super fun fight. So those two are, are your your main and co-main, you know, worth the price of admission alone. Yeah, that's what, July 26th in Tampa, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's going to be a, a banger. And then the next month, you guys are coming back to Atlantic City for 134, Luke Fernandez title defense. So I know that card's still being made out a little bit, but what are you able yep. to tell us about 134? Because I know the Atlantic City cars are always big ones. Yeah, so obviously we got Luke defending his title. We're bringing uh, Will Dick back. Will had a, a minor injury during fight week, which precluded him from fighting. So we, we got that. We got that signed. Uh, we're going to have Tiger Shulman well represented. We're going to have Dante, Dante Rivera um, well represented. So as soon as I, you know, get some of more of the fight card together, Jake, I'll reach out to you and let you know so you can make some possible announcements. My man. And then my last question, my most journalistic question of the entire interview here. Any uh, any teasers, anything you can tell us about Cage Fury coming up the rest of the year after 134? Yeah, um, we have some really... We have uh, really big signings, two signings I'm hoping to announce within two weeks, which could be uh, monstrous. Uh, it, ha it has a lot to do with the wrestling scene um, coming into MMA. So we don't have pen to paper yet, but if that comes through, uh, I think people will be really, really happy. I love it, man. I love it. And Arius, before I get you out of here to enjoy your sunny Friday, uh, anything you'd like to say to all the uh, Cage Fury supporters checking out this interview? Yeah, man. Um, we we really did a great job with CFFC 132. We came back with another Muay Thai show, which was absolutely awesome. Um, you know, please continue to support us, www.cffc.tv. I just want to thank my wife again for being there for me. I just want to thank Rob for the award. Um, Spivak Jewelers, Cherry Hill, please check them out. Um, and just thank you to all the fans that, that continue to support us and support our guys that continue on to make it to the UFC. Aries. You're the man, the Hall of Fame, well-deserving. I don't know about long overdue because it's so new, but I think it was the right time. Third in the Hall of Fame. Can't take that away from you, my man. So congratulations. Never. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't miss out. Cage Fury, 133, 134, and a hell of a lot more cards coming at you this year. Arius, my man, thank you. And Jake, really quick, we gotta the, those post fight interviews at the shows. We gotta keep you. We gotta keep you on that. Oh, so I love those, that, dude. Yeah, those were those were awesome. The, it was just a little experimentation. I told Rob, I'm just bringing cameras, see what happens. And I think, yeah, I think that would be sick to do that every card, yeah. every fighter. And just gives everyone content, you know, like Bilal got 15,000 views. Yeah, but I think, I think, I think it was awesome. I really enjoyed watching them the next day. It was, I appreciate uh, the work that you do, Jake, and, and giving these guys another platform just to get exposure for themselves. So it was awesome. Keep up the good work. That's the goal, man. Give you all some platforms. Well-deserving. All right, Aries Garcia, wrapping it there.